Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for September 28th, 2022. Well, doggone it, we just can't seem to get anything going here to the bullish side, even though we are um, quite oversold. Um, we continue to have these currency fluctuations. We continue to have these issues crop up around the world, creating more bearishness um, in the market. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the uh, Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. How about we just get right to this and see what we've got going on in this market. Well, those doggone bears are pretty feisty. Uh, they continue to push us down. We rallied up yesterday. As you can see, we're hitting this level right in here, but we've been rejecting that level the last couple of days and ended up selling off pretty strongly into the close yesterday and um, pushing us into a well with a bearish engulfing candle um, in that chart and pushing us to those new lows um, in the market. As a matter of fact, if we look across over here, um, we can see um, we're, we're picking up a little bit of support maybe right in here. And if that doesn't hold, well, you know, um, there is the possibility of more downside here in the market if these things continue to expand the way they have been. Now, if we take a look at upside possibilities, if we can catch a rally here today, and we've had futures bouncing all over the place this morning, um, there is that possibility that uh, we bounce up and maybe we test some resistance here. Um, um, in the chart right in that area or if we can push up through there we've got pretty significant resistance right in there we do have to keep in mind downtrends are still in play lots of pressure here in the market so even if we do rally we want to be watching for those potential whipsaws and we've seen those today and I've been warning about that the volatility of this market is high so you're going to want to be careful about jumping in first thing thinking that we're just going to rip to the upside because we might very shortly and then reverse and go all the way back down with all of the things um, happening here in the world including um, uh, you know a pretty nasty storm coming into Florida um, all of you Floridians please be safe be careful get out of the way this category 4 looks like it could be pretty devastating so be safe out there let's take a look at our um, technicals of this chart if we take a peek here um, obviously pretty darn bearish here um, in the daily chart short-term averages well below the 50 50 day moving average turning over uh, toward the downside our 200 day moving average is close to uh, crossing down through our 500 day we're creating lots and lots of technical damage and if we look at a weekly on this well we have now failed through the 200 day moving average and that again that oversold condition would suggest we get some kind of relief rally at any time so be watching for that possibility but don't don't get into the idea that it's all over that from here we just go up because we've just we've got a lot of things to deal with here um, in the market a lot of things to resolve but there may be some upside coming here soon um, if we were to take a look at our um, SPY SPY same situation bearish engulfing candle we continue to show lots of stress here in the market and as you can see um, we sat right here on the June low we temporarily made a new low yesterday but we ended up closing right there on the June low so that does give us some hope fingers crossed that there could be a little bit of a rally to the upside but if we do get that rally I want you to notice right here in this area we have struggled 
right here in this area. We keep hitting right in there and not able to push through that area. Obviously, we've got just a little bit of price resistance in the chart right there. Um, so watch that carefully. If we were able to get up through that level, maybe we can finally get a little bit of relief on the way. There is a small gap above there, as you can see, that we might have, have an opportunity to fill for that next resistance level coming in the chart. And keep in mind, downtrends are still in play. Again, if we take a look at our moving averages, really bearish here on the daily chart, 50-day moving average turning lower again, short-term average averages definitely down we are stretched to the downside which makes me want to believe that a relief rally could occur at any time but notice our 200 day is sliding down here pretty quickly toward that 500 day and we could um, easily have that crossover there soon and on the weekly well we haven't quite made it to that 200 so we have that possibility that being this close to the 200 day moving average on the weekly that we could um, 200 weekly moving average um, I apologize that 200 weekly that we could um, push on down and test that level pretty easily let's take a look at our uh, QQQ now our NASDAQ Boy, it's been back and forth, whipsawing all over the place. But if we drop a drop a line right in here, you can see there's our low of June. And this morning we're showing a little bit of bearishness here um, on that chart, trying to push down toward that area. So if we can hold that area, that would give us some reason to maybe hope for a bounce. And if we do bounce, then let's look at some of these resistance levels in the chart. We could bounce up into here pretty easily and find some resistance. The strong resistance seems to be right in this area. If we can push up into this area and push through, then there might be some hope for the bulls. But pushing up into this area, you can see how we continue to reject um, this area at the moment and obviously downtrend is also right in that area. This very sharp downtrend is right in that area. We certainly could use this as the trend overall, but pretty ugly um, here in that chart and a lot of work to do to recover. If we take a look at our moving averages here, well, um, our daily chart, you can see very bearish, 50-day moving average rolling out over. Our 200-day is already substantially through the 500-day, very bearish here. And on our weekly chart, well, we just failed at the 200-day yesterday on the QQQ. And um, right now, it looks like we may go a little bit lower on the NASDAQ this morning, so watch that close. If we take a look at IWM, IWM also, pretty bearish uh, chart here as you can see we came in toward that uh, June low and bounced just before we got there um, uh, on, on, on the Russell and as you can see if we can get a little bit of bullish movement going we've got a fairly tough level of price resistance right in here where we've been trying to break through failing right there on the daily so we'll want to watch that close now what's going on why are we having so much trouble to the upside well honestly it, it has to do with currencies and what we've been seeing is the US dollar strengthening against currencies around the world and this morning um, the UK actually jumped in um, starting to accommodate again because they're uh, the pound um, has been falling so substantially um, here the last few days. Now, we still have, as you can see, the U.S. dollar holding up pretty strongly. Um, but we'll want to watch that. If um, countries start to raise their rates, if countries start to do operations to strengthen their currency, then we could see that dollar come in pretty quickly and that would help the market a lot. If currencies continue to sink against the dollar, that's going to continue to create pressure. And we know that the Fed has just been pretty clear on the fact we're going to 4.6% um, interest. So we're not done with the interest rate increases and we certainly haven't broken anything here substantially 
in the market to have them change that. If you saw the numbers yesterday coming out, um, housing numbers came in hotter than expected, consumer confidence came in hotter than expected, and that is not what the Fed wants to see. So um, we're probably going to continue to lean into those high rates. Um, continuing to strengthen the US dollar. So keep an eye on that. A lot of trouble here. Last night, uh, European markets sold off substantially. Um, uh, excuse me, Asian markets sold off substantially. European markets are down across the board here this morning. And US futures have fluctuated from being way down overnight to pushing up and just recently went green in the Dow futures. And now we're back down on the day. So lots of volatility here in the market. I think anything is possible. Now let's take a look at our VIX here quick. Our VIX continuing to move up here. And I've mentioned this before where we could get some capitulation in the market and get a major change from the institutions um, in, in selling and, and why would the institutions sell? If we continue to push this down, what's likely to occur is those folks that hold, and, and most of the world, most of the United States folks, uh, the vast majority hold 401k plans, hold mutual funds, things like that for their savings and investing. And if they start calling um, um, those institutions saying, get me out, then we get the forced redemption that happens. Um, institutions may not want to sell, but then they're kind of pushed into selling. And I think that kind of, that kind of panic or fear won't start until we get above this area here in the VIX. But as you can see, the way the market is acting here, it's just not out of the question that we could spike up there really quickly on the next news report that comes around. So watch that carefully. But if we can rest or if we can pull back, that would be the best thing for us right now. Get a little bit of relief rally going on. Get a little pullback coming in on the VIX. That would be um, a great thing to see here in the market. But right now, um, I wouldn't hold my breath on it just yet um, with the things that are uh, circulating around out there in the market. Let's take a look at our T2122. Our T2122, well, doggone it, it continues to suggest an extreme oversold condition. We've been very, very bearish. Um, you can see we're kind of creating this little hump pattern here that we did um, um, earlier. Um, but it's extending out. So if we can get enough energy to get going here, then uh, maybe we can relieve some of that pressure. And certainly T2122 is suggesting we need that relief. Um, I'm not saying that that means that we just rip to the upside. As a matter of fact, I'll be looking for more short trades as we rally uh, toward resistance levels. But um, if you... Um, look at this it, it certainly uh, says we should get a relief rally at any time and we should be watching for it if we take a look at our t2108 t2108 well we're kind of flat on the bottom here yesterday um, kind of hooking down here at the bottom the good news on this is we haven't taken out that june low just yet but it's pretty tough to be feeling very uh, spunky about the market here when we have only 12% of the stocks holding above their 40-day moving average. Pretty rough situation. Now, that does suggest a, a, a very substantial oversold condition for the short term. Again, leaning into that potential of a re relief rally that occur, could occur at any time. And then T2107, T2107 continuing to show uh, bearishness here, sinking. We're not down here toward those um, June-July lows in T2107, but certainly 16% of the stocks below their 200-day or holding above their 200-day is certainly not um, a bullish situation here to be excited about. It does, again, suggest that oversold condition. So maybe we can catch that bounce here sooner or later, as long as these events out there around the world don't continue to trigger more pressure. And unfortunately here this morning, guys, our T2101 continues to show us 
that um, momentum is there with the downside. No change on that yesterday. So momentum, at least at this point, is still suggesting down. If we take a look at our um, economic calendar here today, well, we have a few things that can continue to create pressure in the market and some uncertainty coming that could certainly keep us on the edge of our seats. First off, we had mortgage applications come in this morning, a 22 year low in, in uh, mortgage origination, mortgage applications. So um, pretty ugly situation there on the mortgage front and our bonds continue to move higher um, here on the day. So um, two year bonds, 4.19%. Uh, the last look I, I had out of them this morning, um, bonds continue to be under pressure here as those yields move higher and higher, um, suggesting more and more trouble out here in the market. Now, we do have an international trade in goods number today. That has been bullish here recently. Our international trade deficit has been improving because of those currency fluctuations. So keep an eye on that. That could give us maybe a little bit of love. We get some retail inventories advance, and then we get the wholesale inventories coming in. Let's watch that. We could start to see those inventories creeping up if consumers aren't spending. We have a parade of Fed um, speak here today. We've got Bostic, we've got Bullard, we've got Powell, we've got Bo Bowman, and then we've got Evans later on in the day. And then we're also going to um, have a petroleum status number along with a two-year and seven-year note auction. So keep an eye on that as that two-year spikes up here today. And um, I forgot to mention this one, pending home sales. We'll want to keep an eye on that at 10 a.m. And then as we get through all of that, well, doggone it, we're going to have to deal Thursday morning with a GDP number. We know that's a potential market moving number and the jobless claims. So keep an eye on those. Um, that could be um, make for an interesting morning tomorrow before the bell. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar for today. Now, our earnings calendar um, has a little bit more going on on it. We've got um, oh, 15, 16 companies, something like that, that um, are confirmed reports. Um, but what we have for notables is just not huge um, out there. We've got CentOS. Um, the, uh, not exactly the notables that we would like to really get things moving. So keep an eye on this. We've got CentOS reporting um, today. We've got Jeffries, a financial reporting today. Um, obviously, our financials have been pretty, pretty rough here recently. We've got um, MLKN um, reporting today. PAYX, as you can see, most of these have been in severe downtrends. Maybe the earnings report can get things going, but probably not enough to really change the direction of the market. Um, and they're not heavy enough weighted companies to do that. Uh, we've got Thor Industries reporting today, and we've got um, um, Vail Resorts um, in there. So not exactly things that are going to move us around, but those are the notables for today. By the way, I want to mention to everyone that there is no no blog today. It was a fault of my own, so no blog this morning. I do apologize. If you go to the morning blog, if you um, uh, happen to access the uh, video from, from there, you notice that you just clicked right through to the uh, video here this morning. So thanks so much for everyone who does follow uh, the video. And I want to say thank you to everyone who attended the class last night. Um, don't feed the bear. Um, um, you guys are truly awesome. I appreciate it. And I want to say thank you to everyone also that subscribes to this channel. Um, thank you everyone who takes the time to su subscribe to that channel, making sure you click that link, um, that bell icon, so that um, you'll be notified every time I post a video. And then also, if you would be um, 
willing to do me the favor of sharing that video out there on any of your uh, social media feeds that helps other folks sh um, find um, this content and um, hopefully they find it helpful as well um, please leave those <clears throat> brief comments on the video that helps the channel to continue to grow and click those thumbs up buttons let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up here guys but before we do that I want to make sure and remind everyone that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security you're going to have to do your own due diligence and be very very careful and as a matter of fact there's just not a whole lot I can I can put out there for great patterns setups um, in the market we are so oversold in the short term I would not want to suggest um, um, that we should be um, here I wanted to do Microsoft that we should be um, um, jumping in and, and assuming that we're going to bounce to the upside for long trades but I also wouldn't want to suggest that you should chase um, short positions to the downside right now we're kind of in that really difficult period of the market but there are some things out there that are trying to um, get a little bit going um, if you guys I'm um, not CLF um, CCJ. If you guys remember, I'm holding a position here um, longer term in CCJ, and you can see we've had a recent upside move here in CCJ. We're still trying to hold, and this is an alternative energy. We've talked about that before. We're, we're running desperately short on energy supplies here around the world, and there's become a, a much bigger interest in uranium. So keep an eye on CCJ. Holding that, still have a great profit in that position. Um, watch that carefully in case it does break that upside trend, and then you might want to um, take it off of your list. But for now, I'm trying to bounce back up here on that daily. If we were to take a look at First Solar, First Solar continuing to hang in there. Remember, we're federal government's pumping a whole bunch of money into these alternative energy sources and keeping an eye on for solar um, it's hanging in there and may potentially move to the upside I mentioned some of the retail stocks that have been hanging in just pretty darn well um, although we sold off here recently boy we're just not giving up as much as we have been in other areas of the market so watch that close um, here in the chart and last but not least I'm going to mention like TLT now this is too early for this but one of the things that I am watching for here and notice we've had a little bit of a bounce here in TLT this morning um, TLT would be if the bonds suddenly start to pull back we've seen our first country um, um, Britain blink the Bank of England um, uh, blink and say okay we're going to do accommodation here for a little bit to um, secure our currency and if we continue to see those kind of things happen we could maybe see those bonds those bond yields come in quite a bit and they could ha it could happen really quickly and I've done this before where um, when when something snaps in the market and then suddenly bonds are just a very attractive uh, buy so watch that carefully that possibility that bonds could bounce at any time um, if we see those bond yields starting to break or fall so watch that carefully if we can pop that downtrend and hold there could be some nice upside in bond buying because countries around the world are having to buy up these bonds uh, to secure debt and um, well, it's just going to be an interesting situation as we work through this. Now, keeping in mind, guys, that I'm running this video long. I apologize. But I also want to remind everyone that we still have lots of uncertainty. Remember, we're only a couple of weeks from starting um, third quarter earnings. And, uh, excuse me, starting fourth quarter earnings. And um, it's not atypical that when there's so much uncertainty in the market that we just chop around in a range for a period of time as we wait for those earnings to kick off that could be the next thing that gets us moving or going so 
once again, as much as I want to see a relief rally in the market, I'm not going to be all that confident in that relief rally because I think companies that are getting ready to report earnings here in the next couple of weeks, I just can't imagine they're going to be great. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of challenges ahead in the next couple of quarters on those earnings. So be really, really careful buying in thinking, hey, we're just going to rip to the upside unless something major changes. And then the other thing out there that we have to consider is we have a midterm election coming. We're only 50 some days away, something like that from midterm elections. And um, as you know, that can change an awful lot as well. So keep an eye on those things. A lot of uncertainty here for the market to deal with. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Be careful. Protect that capital. Don't be rushing in. Avoid the high speculation. Make the institution show you that they are finally going to start supporting the market. Because remember, unless the institutions start putting a bottom in here, unless they're buying, we're not going up. So we need to see proof from those institutions that they're going to start buying and start supporting the market. We haven't seen that. Despite what they say, their actions have been the opposite. They say, oh, great buys. This is a great buy. This is a great buy. And then they continue to sell. Institutions have to pick the bottom. Let them do that. And then we have an opportunity to make some upside money. All right. Everyone take care. Have an awesome day. And I'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Wish you all the best.